This very short walkway commemorates a once pristine salt marsh. This sign alludes to the many challenges this estuary has had and still faces. Egrets and cormorants come together along the shoreline, looking for something good to eat. The roads, the industries, and even landfills have played their part in the filling in of this disappearing Rumney Marsh. Just five miles north of Boston, there is a place for migrating birds, for fish to spawn, and for many forms of ocean life. Here along its eroding channels, a salt marsh struggles. Sometimes called nurseries of the sea and considered the world's most productive ecosystems. Today, Rumney Marsh stands at the crossroads. Its fate determined by human beings. One of these human beings is Ed Reiner. The whole coastal ecosystem is really dependent on our salt marshes. They're the nursery grounds for the coastal ecosystem, the fisheries, basically. Our salt marshes are very important. And this is the largest remaining salt marsh in the Boston metropolitan area. In 1988, this area was designated as an area of critical environmental concern by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Biologist and wetland scientist Ed Reiner works for the federal government. In high school, Ed knew he wanted to be a champion for the environment. Documenting Coney Island Creek. Today, Ed is a champion of Rumney Marsh. Wetlands are good for the ecosystem, they're good for our fisheries, they're good for the shell fisheries, they're good for the birds, the wildlife, certainly good for the people watching it as well. But this is an altered landscape, and this is something that can be restored. Ed has spent most of his adult life caring for wetlands. And here, close to home, is one of the most biologically significant salt marshes north of Boston. But since 1803, Rumney Marsh has experienced a 45% loss. Nearly half is now developed and filled in. We can't really restore this marsh unless we restore salt water to it, because salt marshes need salt water. And restoring it as fresh water won't work because this plant thrives in fresh water. The problem with Phragmites is that it not only destroyed the ecology and the fish and wildlife aren't here anymore, it, the marsh might be breeding a lot of mosquitoes because the fish aren't eating the mosquito larvae for the little areas of water that remain stagnant in the ditches in, in this environment. The other hazard is this stuff burns very readily, so it represents a significant fire hazard. But Phragmites are just a symptom. One cause? Here, a plate of steel covers a pipe where a bridge once spanned a tidal creek. This is flood protection, designed to keep water out of the marsh. But this one leaks, so a small portion of salt water is getting past, but not nearly enough to restore a salt marsh. Salt marshes need salt water. Without the salt water, what you have happening here is Phragmites, common reed, the taller vegetation, has taken over the salt marsh plants that would have covered this entire area. So uh, proper salt water exchange is vital to the functioning of the salt marshes and for the fish and the wildlife that provide the whole food chain that we depend on with commercial fisheries. There is advanced technology which can help restore salt water flow. This is a self-regulating tide gate which allows salt water to flow in as well as out. Here is an example of what salt water flow can do. You can see the marsh is healthy on this side where the salt water is flowing. But where it is stopped by this blocked culvert, 
The other side is invaded with Phragmites. But the single most disruptive development to befall Rumney Marsh is what I'll call the highway to nowhere. Between 1967 and 1969, six million cubic yards of fill material was brought in by truck and train to build a 2.4 mile long embankment. This abandoned highway stretches the length of Rumney Marsh. Here, restrictions have completely cut off the flow of water and it looks like a desert. The earth is dry and cracked. The removal of the I-95 embankment and fill, Ed Reiner stresses, is key to the restoration efforts. This area that you're seeing um, lower was excavated for beach nourishment purposes in Winthrop, Massachusetts. So this was removed for beneficial purposes at Winthrop Beach, which is great. And the intent here is to restore this as a wetland if we could bring in salt water and restore it to a salt marsh the way it used to be. A cliff created by the abandoned highway project erodes into this man-made channel. It is here where the meandering Pines River came through. And it is here that Ed Reiner would like to see it flow once again. For now, the salt water is blocked. A single entry is through this rock-armored channel that would have been spanned by a bridge. But where there is limited flow in, there is also limited flow out. This estuary won't be able to drain fully during the time that in between a storm that the tides drop lower. So the water levels get higher and higher. And this restriction ends up then causing worse flood because the duration is prolonged because the water then takes time to get out. When the railroad was built, the marsh drained and in turn created the development of homes, which are built in the floodplain. Normally a marsh acts as a buffer protecting people and property. The peat made up of thousands of years of decaying plants acts as a sponge absorbing water. So it's not surprising that homes built in a marshland would flood. In the background is uh, basically a finger of a former salt marsh uh, ditch where there was more marshland that ultimately was developed into houses here. And there's not much left to the ditch. I don't know how far it goes, but this is how the drainage system works. Balancing the needs of flood protection and the restoration of this marsh is a conversation that needs to happen. In the meantime, there are successes. This area where a portion of the abandoned highway fill has been removed shows the natural beauty of a restored salt marsh wetland. And this was all highway fill at a height higher than where, what we're at originally. And it was removed and 19 acres of wetlands came back just with nature restoring it by itself after the proper grading. At the end of a very short walk along this embankment is a clam flat. The grasses begin to grow and pickleweed spreads. Unfortunately, the happy ending for Rumney Marsh seems a long way off as Ed Reiner shows us what is leaching into the sea from a dump. And it's been eroding for a long time with uh, refuse coming out of the, of the bank that was formerly salt marsh here. There's nine acres of upland fill here, which is all a garbage dump. There are many man-made threats to this marsh. And perhaps one of the worst is what is alluded to on this sign along this very short public walkway. And I quote, During the middle of the 20th century, the coastal wetlands marshes were considered marginal wastelands and were encroached upon and used for solid waste dumps, junkyards, and various commercial uses to the detriment of this great natural resource. 
Perhaps the only thing that will save this marsh is an awakening of public consciousness, community involvement, and more champions like Ed Reiner. You, you are the salt of the earth. You, you are the sea. And when you come to visit us, you, you are the estuary. In other words, we call you marsh, wetlands, and tidal pools. And when we come to visit you, we, we hope that you are here. Cause we don't know what we've got till it's gone And that's so long And if we could go back in time Would we do things differently